everybody, Josh RV Nerd with Vicious RV welcoming you back here, taking an updated look at the G Flight 195 RB. This is, um, it, it's funny, it seems like there's so many manufacturers who make like a, a rear bathroom where you, you walk in the door right on top of the bed and this one puts the entry door on the other side of the dining. So you've got good door side dining, you've actually got decent door side window coverage, but it creates a little bit more separation and privacy, I feel, for your front bedroom. One of the other things this does uh, pretty differently versus a lot of other small campers is that it's a walk around bed instead of like an east west corner bed all shoved up into the frontage of this thing. Uh, very nice if you know uh, one or two of you like to get up or down at night sometimes and use the bathroom. You don't necessarily have to crawl over one another. Maybe uh, those days are behind you. I don't know. It's carpetless. It's easy cleaning. It's pet friendly although with the limited space you know a couple big dogs will very quickly dominate this thing. Uh, and today we happen to be looking at it in the um, Idaho exclusive Baja edition. So J Flight has an Indiana production facility where most of my videos have come from, but they also have an Oregon facility that does things slightly differently because people camp differently uh, in today. So uh, I want to give you a kind of an overview of what this floor plan offers, also what the Baja edition can offer you. And if you like what you see, but you live more in the Midwest, the good news is there's kind of a way around that too. In the Midwest, they make a thing called STX edition, which does everything Baja does and applies fiberglass skin. So there's all kinds of different little variants that you might find in these from uh, you know region to region here. Now being a Jayco, it's got the best warranty out there. And I don't know of anyone else in a uh, single axle little stick and tin camper like this offering a two plus three year warranty. But it's also got a couple things that like there's a thing in the bathroom that uh, this floor plan continues to baffle me why they do it. And I wanna give you that kind of uh, extra insight and information before you go spending your money to make sure this is the right one for you. And if you appreciate that, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like our video, and let's get rolling. Now, one of the first things I want to mention here, uh, because, you know, I don't expect everybody to watch every video I make. Maybe you've seen one of these in years past. These single axle J Flight uh, SLX models, they used to be shorter inside. They were not six and a half foot tall like they are now from floor to ceiling panel. So what that meant, somebody like me, a little taller than the average, they were only six foot one inside. They were really short, especially if you had like a roof air unit like here, I'd be bashing my head on that thing constantly. Well, you don't have that problem anymore. Also, now if you're sensitive to light flickering, you might want to look away for a second. Now I'm going to give you a countdown. One, two, three, go. They put an amazing lighting package in this. And if you are light sensitive, go ahead and look back now. Um, one of the other, you know, I don't want to flicker this on you, but bang, just to let you know, you've got the, uh, like every single light can be individually uh, flicked on or off. Now, when you get into these small, uh, very budget sensitive campers, this is the single most price aggressive segment in the market. What I mean is not just the lowest price from the manufacturers. I mean, each manufacturer doing everything they can to offer this camper $1 at least cheaper than everybody else who makes something like it. Um, so those extra lights, all those extra little things like how each light clicks off, that stuff adds up the double lights over the bed, for instance, you know? Every little ounce counts in these things. Now look at the bedsides, nice and wide open. You're not gonna feel like you're uh, sleeping in a box, which is good because you know, when you get on a manufacturer's website and you look at that floor plan, it's going to say queen bed. Um, it's a full. It's, it's, uh, I believe that's a 54 by uh, 74 bed. That is not a queen. It's not even a short camp queen. It's not even quite as wide. So please keep that in mind. And, and I want you to know you're getting real information when you watch these videos. Now, it doesn't have cabinet doors overhead, but I've heard some people say they get some kind of baskets from... I don't know, Bed Bath & Beyond or wherever you get baskets. My wife gets that stuff. I don't have a clue. And because this has a little bit of a lip right there, it tends to hold them in place pretty well. But back to the bedside stand. Sorry, <laughs> squirrel. Um, household outlets on both sides. Those have been there. I like the USB outlets on the right. I wish they were also on the left, but I also, like I said, I understand that this is a real budget-sensitive segment. Now, cracking everything and open and looking around, there is big-time storage below the bed. It's not gas strutted though. You may have noticed I used the jack crank to kind of hold that open a little bit right there. Handy little video trick that I learned years ago. But I also, like I said, I don't want to mislead you. I want you to understand what you're looking at here. Um, there's storage below the dinette. That becomes a sleeper. Massive closet right by the rear door. That is something I think is very, very cool. Now, uh, we're out here uh, in the Pacific Northwest. And out here, boondocking is king. 
So that gas electric six cubic foot two-way fridge we're looking at is what is by far the dominant choice out here. Um, where I'm from, Michigan, in the Midwest, the eight cubic foot 12 volt DC compressor fridge option, that's what people like. The good news is you have your choice. You can swap in those, as I like to say. And this is really not a camper intended to like sit in and watch TV all day, but if you really felt like it, there's a big blank wall right here. One of the best parts that sti about stick and tin campers where they don't get credit is there's every 16 inches on center on average a stud in the wall. So uh, you get the stud finder, fellas, hold it up to your chest and go, yep, there's one to properly calibrate it and then put it on the wall. And you can mount a TV all over the place on that thing. You see the uh, the coax and all the outlets for it. This is another really cool thing on these that, uh, again, in a budget camper, you don't often run into. And that is that this has both a gas and electric water heater, it's also fast recharge, meaning um, if you have like part power or a generator available, you can run the gas and electric uh, sides simultaneously and get just under 18 gallons of hot water per hour. Now we're looking at one today with the optional uh, solar package, and as you can see, that's where the charge controller is located here. Now it's got a crazy blinking red light because uh, we're parked indoors and then I ain't getting no sunshine. and. There's no sunshine when you're gone, as the song does say. Now, I love all the space under the sink. Great for wastebasket, but not a single drawer in this camper is a little... It's like, ah, crap. Um, the uh, refrigerator face inserts on that, by the way, are exchangeable. So if you don't like white, if you want something looking like stainless or, I don't know, some other kind... Chalkboards! I've seen chalkboard inserts for those that are actually very cool. And not only can it kind of look neat... But uh, it's also very functional. One other quick thing to note here. Um, I should have mentioned this sooner. Today, we're looking at the farmhouse decor with that white kitchen. You don't have to have that. You can get uh, like a brown decor, basically. I think it's called cottage or something like that. And, um, you know, you don't have to go with the white kind of uh, color right there. Um, carpetless, easy cleaning. No heat vents anywhere because it's a small camper. It has direct uh, ducted uh, furnace. And you see right there, handy set of power outlets under that table in case you want to run a coffee maker. Or, you know what can also be nice, as I've gotten older, running a heat pad on my lower back. One of these days, probably not in the too far future. And don't get me wrong, I, I, I've got plenty of miles to go yet. I'm not the, I'm not the oldest dog in the business. But one of these days, you're going to hear snap, crackle, popping. And someone's going to say, oh, that cheap wood must be cracking under Josh's feet. No, no, it's just my lower back. <laughs> Not a big bathroom, but I do respect that it is a dry bath, not a toilet in the shower wet bath. And interestingly, they go with a tub right here. But part of the reason they do that is because when you go with a tub, you tend to go with a shower curtain. And the shower curtain is helping give you extra elbow room. Now, they are doing something in this bathroom. They've always done this, and I've never understood it. They give us a vent with no fan. That's... A baffling choice to me. Now, thankfully, that power, uh, well, there's a light right there. So 12 volt power is right next to it. If you like everything about this camper, but you would like a fan in the bathroom, that is the kind of thing that we can assist you with and we can install for you. Give our team here at Bish's RV a call at any of our locations. That is an easy open and shut kind of case deal for you. Now, one of the cool things about this is uh, RVs keep getting a little bit heftier, heftier every single year. And uh, this is one of those uh, rigs that for uh, a, a, a stronger tow package SUV or like a tow package midsize pickup would make an absolutely excellent pairing, especially considering this is a seven foot narrow body versus an eight foot standard body. So it's easier to see around. But that being said, I really do recommend always getting things like the towing extension mirrors and whatnot. Now, uh, once again, we are looking at the Baja edition today, and assuming I remember to include this, here's what the Baja package includes. And if I forget to edit this into the video right now, you're looking at the trailer on the right-hand side of the screen with absolutely nothing on the left side. Uh, hopefully I didn't forget. <laughs> But I've been recording a ton of footage lately, and it's going to take me a while to get everything updated. Now, for the 23 season, they've gone away from that kind of boxy, rippled nose. They went that cool, smooth-looking nose. And personally, I really like the color contrast, but that's my two cents. Um, remember, there is a, uh, a fiberglass option available on these, and the STX edition from the Indiana Midwestern supplier, uh, uh, Jayco Plant, um, that is forced fiberglass plus all the Baja features. So, um, 
Everybody can still kind of get everything. It just depends on what they call it in what various region. Now, even though this is the smallest, simplest, lightest, least expensive, and most basic thing Jayco builds, they still are pretty safety-minded. Like, you are prepped and ready for uh, a full observation camera suite, both uh, a rear view camera as well as side views. And you don't have to do them all together. You could do like just the rear if you wanted to. But you also have turn signal safety lighting on this called J Smart Lighting. And what's kind of cool about that, you go flicking on that right hand turn signal and that light that we were just looking at, that amber colored light or that red one on the back there, they will blink along with your turn signal so that other drivers on the road got a clue what you're doing before you know you end up in a uh, uncomfortable situation by the way there are separate power lines run to that side camera prep as well as the turn signal lighting so the camera is not going to clip in and out when you hit the turn signal um, when you go to the baja edition one of the things you might have noticed uh, is that it does flip the axle and it raises everything up it also moves this from a goodyear endurance to a goodyear wrangler tire and uh, one of the things what it's accomplishing here is some extra ground clearance and where you can really discern that is right here with the uh, the triple stable step instead of a double. Oh, I just caught an update. This is something I've been wanting to see on these for a while. So it's hard to see because it's shattered over here. Rear stabilizer jacks, but they finally started putting front stabilizer jacks up there. So when you get to your campsite, you know, single axle campers like this get very herky-jerky when people walk around inside them. And some people are very sensitive to motions like that. Um, that that will do wonders toward helping uh, reduce that a great deal. And just to make sure you can see it, there is a gas grill quick connect off the side here, and they're still still doing a full bumper. What they're not doing is any sort of ladder or ladder prep. It does still have a walkable roof, and as you can see, it does have the optional solar package applied to this uh, 30 amp charge controller. Now it will always have roof solar prep. But just like we're looking at right here, you can also option on a panel straight from the factory. Now the awning is not very big. That's one other thing I would like to see. I, I feel like there's gotta be an awning that could extend past that window and line up right in between those. That would be really nice, but I'm sure it would cost a couple bucks more. And that's kind of the catch 22 in a little camper segment like this. Uh, there's a hundred things I think we could do to it or would prefer to see or like to see. But a lot of times those things start adding up dollars and sometimes they add up very, very quickly. And sometimes manufacturers have to kind of ride that line to make sure that it's still within a price point that people are willing to pay, you know? That's the, uh, the, the hardest part of RV design. No matter what you do, there's always some benefit and there's always some drawback. But overall, let me know what you think about this one. So once again, thank you for tuning in everybody. Uh, especially on a model like this, where like we've seen it on this channel before but they continue to update and evolve and change and rearrange things, eh, a little bit at least, every year. And I always like you to know what's out there and what's current, especially on something like Jayco's that we have at so many of our different Bish's RV locations. But again, we have these uh, a little bit more on the east, like my hometown Coldwater Michigan store, the J flights are a little bit different than what you might see here uh, out west, like I'm in Oregon right now or in Idaho or some of our other stores, you know? So uh, depending on where you're at in the country, when you go to see them in person, they might vary a little bit, but we do try to have unique photo sets for every piece of inventory on our website. So you can always see uh, you know, what you're going to run into when you visit one of our stores. And we don't do hidden fees, we just do everything else. Apologies for the convenience. And when you're ready, we're ready. So thanks again for tuning in. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.